Hey guys, this is Charles with Things Inc. And in this tutorial, we're gonna learn all about the basics of coding in rooms. We'll dive into the code editor and take a look at some really cool coding templates you guys can use. We'll also take a look at some simple coding we can do on our own. And I'll show you guys a few other coding tips and tricks. And no worries if you guys are brand new to coding, this is definitely a beginner level tutorial. And as always, you can follow along on your iPad or iPhone. I'm actually gonna be using the browser version of Rooms. So let's go ahead and jump over there and get started. All right, guys, I have a room open here. Let's go ahead and jump over to the edit mode. And just like you can edit anything in a room using the model editor, we can also add code to anything using the code editor. So we have a cat down here on the bed. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the cat. And you can see over here we have the properties panel. And we have edit and we have model and we also have code. And if we go ahead and click on code, that's gonna launch open the code editor. And right off the bat, we're greeted with several different templates we can choose from. You can select these and it'll automatically add that code to whatever thing you're working with. These are really handy. They can do a lot of different useful things. Before we jump into those though, I wanna come down here to the very bottom, you're gonna see we have programming tutorial, coding documentation, and preview. These are three handy things you wanna be familiar with. If you go ahead and click on programming tutorial, that's gonna launch this article. It's on Medium by Bruno. He's one of the members of Things Inc. And this is a nice article that will walk you through kind of the basics of doing some coding in rooms, very similar to what we're gonna be doing today in this tutorial. But I highly recommend you guys to check out this article. It's a three-part series and you can do this at your own pace, but that's a really handy way you can kind of learn some of the basic coding in rooms as well. Now, the other thing we wanna look at is the coding documentation. Let's go ahead and click on that. And that's gonna launch open the rooms coding API. And this is essentially a complete coverage of all the coding functions you'll ever need to know how to do in rooms and you can see all the different things we can do here. You can click on the effects here and it will bring us down here to play sound. And you can see this kind of shows us exactly what this code does, the descriptions for it, different things. We can also copy and paste code from here. Now I don't wanna overwhelm you guys with this because it can be kind of intimidating when you see all these different options and coding options we have here. We're gonna come back to this a little bit later on. Again, this is the coding basics tutorial, so I wanna keep this really easy and actually I'm not a coding expert myself. So we have our cat selected over here and let's go ahead and let's have the cat say hello. So I'm gonna click on this hello template and that will allow the cat to say hello when it's clicked. When we click on that template, we'll see up here, gives us this green descriptor text, kind of tells us what's going on. This function runs when the user clicks and we can see we have function, on click, it's gonna say hello, and then end. So it added all this code automatically for us. Let's just go ahead and click save. And let's go over here to the play mode. And let's just see what happens when we click on the cat. There we can see it says hello. So that was really easy for us to set up. Let's jump back over to the edit mode. Now let's click on the cat again. And let's go back over to the code editor. And we have this code in here. Now if we wanna have the cat say something else, we can actually customize this text here for what it says next to say. So I could have this say meow. So we went ahead and changed that text. So now it's gonna say meow when he's clicked. I wanna quickly show you guys what this is over here on the right hand side. You see we kind of have this preview of our room and this is a way you can kind of preview changes you make to code really quickly without having to always click save and jump back over to the play mode. So I've changed the text here. And if I wanna go ahead and demo that over here on the right hand side, we can do that. But before we do, you'll see we have this preview down here. You need to click on that and that's going to update and kind of restart the room with your updated code. So let's go over here to the cat now after I click that. And now we can see the cat is saying meow. So again, you can easily customize this text to say whatever you want for anything. It's a nice, quick and easy way you can do that. Let's go ahead and save out of this. Now let's take a look at one of the other coding templates we have. So I'm gonna click this beach ball I've got down here. Now let's go ahead and select the code editor for that. And you can probably guess which template I'm gonna use for this one. That's gonna be the bouncy ball template. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And now we're gonna see a whole slew of code that's been added. Again, we have this green descriptor text, kind of describes everything that it's added in here if you wanna go through and read all that to get a better idea of all the code that's being applied. But we wanna preview this really quickly. So let's go ahead and just click save. And let's go back over to the play mode and let's see what has happened here when we click on the beach ball. Now we can see it bouncing around the room. So that template's obviously working quite well. Let's go back over to the edit mode and let's apply that template to a few other things in our room. So I'm gonna select the baseball here, go over to the code editor and just go ahead and select bouncy ball. That's gonna apply that code. Go ahead and click save. And let's do that here. We have a paper ball down here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Let's do the same thing for it in the code editor. Apply the bouncy ball template. Go ahead and click save. Now let's go ahead and jump into the play editor and we can click on the baseball now. We can see that fly around the room, click on the paper ball, 
That's gonna fly around the room as well. So we can click on all of these and just start tossing things around the room there. Let's jump back over to the edit mode. We can also apply the bouncy ball template to anything that's not a ball. So I can click on the computer monitor here and come over here to the code editor. And we can also apply bouncy ball to that and that will apply the same physics and everything to that. But we also have the option up here you can see for how much force we wanna have applied to whatever thing we're applying this to. And the monitor is probably gonna be heavier than the beach ball and the baseball. So we could lower the force horizontal and vertical here if we want to. So the default's 20, I'm gonna set this to be 10. And for the force vertical, maybe drop this to like half 75. And we can go ahead and click save. And if we go ahead and click play, we can see when we click on the monitor now, it's not gonna fly around as much as the beach ball. So it's kind of like it's more dense, got some weight to it. So that's kind of a cool way you can change how something's gonna bounce around a room. You can see these two objects interact there. So that's kind of neat as well. So let's jump back over to the edit mode. Let's take a look at a really fun template. We're gonna select this toy car in here and come over to the code editor. And this is one of my favorites, so it's the character template. So we can go ahead and select that. And again, this is gonna apply an entire slew of code. You can see how much it's applied here. Again, you can dive into this and read through all the details of that if you want to as well. I'm gonna scroll this back all the way to the top. We have walk speed and jump speed. You can adjust those. So you can add lots of customization to any character you want in here really quickly. I'm just gonna go ahead and click save. And let's jump back over to the play mode. And now we're gonna see we have this D-pad and this B and A button down here. And this is gonna allow us to essentially move our character around the room. Now, if you're using the iOS app, you can actually do this much like you would like a Game Boy on your phone or tablet. However, I'm on the desktop version so I can use my mouse to actually click on the D-pad here and I can steer the car around. And you can see I'm driving it around the room and I can click on the A button here to jump. However, I can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard to drive the car around and just press the A key on the keyboard. So I can actually drive the car over here and jump up onto the piano keyboard over here I've got, and I can just jump around the room. Now, one cool thing is when you have a character that moves around like this, you can actually interact with those other objects that we've applied the bouncy ball template to. So you can see I can run into those, and I'll move those around the room. Or I could jump up here on the desk, maybe bump into the computer monitor there. There we go. So that can be quite a bit of fun. And of course we can always click on the cat here and hear what he has to say. So let's jump back over here to the edit mode. Something else I wanna show you guys is in the things library, we have access to several different things that users have created. And a lot of these things have code embedded into them. Now, not all of them do, but several of them do. And this is a nice way you can learn about coding in rooms as well. So one of my favorites here is gonna be the light switch. So I'm just gonna search up here for switch. And you're gonna see we have this light switch by Alex. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and I'm just gonna add it to the wall in here. And let's go ahead and jump over to the play mode. And now just by adding in that light switch, I can just go ahead and click on it. And that's going to dim the lights in our room. And I can click it again and I'll turn the lights back on. You're also gonna hear a sound effect there. So all of that code is kind of embedded into that light switch. And if we jump over to the edit mode, we can go ahead and select the light switch and we go over to the code editor. And we can see all of that code that again has been embedded into the light switch. We have a sound effect for the switch and the description of the code here that's turning it on bright and dark for the lighting modes of the room. But that's just a nice way you can see that coding is embedded into that thing. I'll click save. Let me show you guys another thing over here in the things library. I'm gonna go ahead and close out that search. Let's go over to the plant tag. And I'm gonna search for a plant that I like to use a lot in my rooms. This one here, the Growing Plant by Alex. I'm gonna select that. I'm just gonna drag and drop it here into the room. And let's go ahead and jump over to the play mode. And now we can see the plant got quite a bit smaller there. But if we click on this, every time we click on it, it's gonna play a sound effect and it's gonna grow a little bit, as you can see that there. And again, that coding's all embedded into our plant. So we come back over to the edit mode. We can click on the plant, come over here to the code editor, and we can see that's playing a different frame for each time it's clicked. It's also playing a sound effect there. So again, all that's embedded into that plant. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. I'm gonna show you guys something cool we can do though with that plant selected. Let's jump over to the model editor for just a second. And we can see all the different frames that are attached to this thing. You can see we have the base plant here and we have the final frame here. We can actually paint on some berries or some flowers onto this. So I'm gonna select paint. And with the brush here, I've got the red. I'm just gonna add in some blooms onto this plant.
and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And now if we go ahead and play this. We can click on this. And now we can see our plant has those flower blooms on it. But that's a fun way you can customize things, again, using the model editor along with the code editor as well. Now I'm gonna click on this lamp I have over here in the corner. And you can see that turns the light on and off. We also hear a sound effect. And if I come over here to the desk lamp and I click on it, you'll see the light turns on and off, but we don't hear a sound. And let's say this was a thing I got from the things library and I want it to make the same sound as this lamp over here in the corner. Again, you can hear that when I click on it. So let's jump over to the edit mode and I'm gonna select that lamp. Now let's come over here to the code editor and we can see it has the function for on click and we can see it's playing a sound and it also has the code in here for the light. So we just wanna focus on the play sound part here. So if I wanna have my desk lamp play the same sound effect as this lamp in the corner, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight that play sound and I'm just going to right click and copy that code. Let's go ahead and click save. And let's go over here to the desk lamp. We're gonna click on it and come over to the code editor. And we can see it has function on click and it enables the light, turns it on or off. But let's add in our code here that we copied for that sound effect. So I'm gonna select here right after the on click. And I'm just gonna hit enter. And I'm gonna just hit the tab key to tab over so it's in alignment with this other code. And I'm just gonna right click and select paste. And now we've pasted in that sound effect. So in theory, this should play the same sound as the lamp over there in the corner. And we can preview this. Just come down here to preview and click that so it updates the code. And now let's go ahead and click on the desk lamp here. And now we can hear that sound effect has been added. So this is handy if you wanna match the sound of different things in your room, kind of keep a common theme there. So that's an easy way you can do that. I'll go ahead and click save. But now let's add in our own sound effect. So I wanna select the keyboard piano down here. And let's go ahead and have this where we click on it, it'll play kind of like a little jazz sound. But before we jump into the code editor, we actually need to load a sound effect into our media library. So down here at the bottom corner again, where the things library is, we have the media library. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And here you can see all the sounds that we have currently loaded in here. And you can drag and drop in your own sound effects or PNG or JPEG images, or you can come over here to find sounds. We can browse some of the sounds that are available. And so I'm gonna come over here under category, and I'm gonna select mood setter. And we have this blues sting here. And I'm gonna hit this plus icon and that's gonna add that to the media library. So I'll just come back down here and click on the media library again. And you can see we have sting blues and it'll be this tan color that kind of shows that this may not be used in our room yet. You can see that even says that there as well. But you will need to remember the name of this file. So sting dash blues. I'll show you guys another way you may not have to always memorize the name, but just it's a good idea to keep that in mind because we will need that for the coding. So we can go ahead and get out of the media library and let's select our keyboard and come over here to code. And we wanna go ahead and start from scratch. And we want this to play when it is clicked. So we need to have it have a function in here. So if we come over to the coding documentation, go ahead and launch that back open. You can see we have these special functions. If I click on that, you can see we have different ones here and one of them is on click. And so that basically means when we click on something, it's going to do something else, such as play a sound here. We can see that there. So let's come back over to our room in the code editor. So I'm gonna type in function. And you can see as I start to type that in, it's gonna kind of auto fill this in and give me some options to choose from. This is a really handy way you can kind of lead yourself into the correct code you wanna type in. So I'm just gonna click on function now, click on that, then I'm gonna hit space. And you can see it's gonna kind of try to auto fill this with some more things. And one of these is on click and that's what I want. So I'm just gonna click on that. And when I do that, it's gonna automatically add the code in here. So I don't have to try to get this perfect. And you can see it says your code here in the green. So that's telling me I need to replace this with something else. So let's go ahead and highlight that. And we wanna have this play a sound. So I'm gonna type in P for play sound. You can see all these are also case sensitive. So by letting this kind of predict and giving us this drop down menu to choose from, makes it a lot handy so you don't have a typo or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select play sound. And when I click on that, it's now gonna give us an option to select from all these different sound effects. And if you're wondering where these come from, these are all the sound effects that are currently in our media library. So, you know, I told you you need to memorize that blues sting name. You can see we have the option here for sting dash blues. If I was gonna type this in, I would need to memorize that and type it in correctly. But again, because it's kind of giving us this drop down menu, I can just go ahead and select that. So I don't have to worry about getting the name perfect. And so now it's gonna go ahead and play that when it's clicked. And this in theory should be set up correctly. So let's go ahead and save this out. And let's jump over here to the play mode. And let's click on the piano. Mm -hmm. 
that sounds like it's working. So that's an easy way you can add a sound effect to a thing for when it's clicked. And with that, you guys have learned a lot of the basics of coding in rooms. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed learning the coding basics in rooms. Make sure you guys check out the Things Inc. YouTube channel where they have a ton of different tutorials on there. Several of them are bite-sized coding tutorials that will help get you guys up and running. So make sure you guys check those videos out. And with that, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you.